Association of Listening to Cyborgs. Uh, this evening, we're in our thrill to have Tara Burke join us. And Tara Burke is for Saxa. For Saxa uh, was formed in 1999, and um, Tara Burke has released seven albums, I believe. Uh, Sounds good. <laughs> <laughs> Sounds right. That's good. Okay. And um, most of them were actually uh, recorded in your home. Um, only one of them has been uh, recorded in a recording studio, so we can definitely think about um, the space of recording and that as a site. Um, Tara Burke has traveled all over the United States, the UK, and Europe, um, and performed in numerous venues. And she will be leading a workshop on loop pedals and all things looping tonight. So thank you so much for joining us. Let's turn it over to you. <laughs> Says, my name is Tara Burke, and I record and perform under the name for Saxa. Uh, I'm just going to give you a brief kind of musical history of, of you know, how, how I came to be here, and um, then I'm going to do kind of a you know, live demonstration of some of the loop pedals I have. Um, so, yeah, as, as she said, I, I mean, I've been playing, I guess, you know, a little over. 15, 16 years as for Saxa. Um, as, you know, solo artist, um, I didn't always do that. I Originally, I was, you know, in my early 20s, I started playing in bands. Um, I, I think the first instrument I acquired was a bass guitar. Um, and I, you know, I, I had a lot of friends that uh, were starting to play music, you know, playing guitar and um, so I started playing in bands with them. Um, I, at the time, too, I was just starting kind of my record collection, starting to listen to a lot of different experimental music. And uh, so I would just, you know, pretty much listen to records and play, you know, bass guitar along with my favorite songs and, uh, and you know, played in these bands. And, I mean, mostly the bands I played in, we, um, you know, it was just like, House, house parties, that kind of informal thing, but, um, you know, it was, it was just, you know, kind of where I had started playing music, people that were excited about playing music, um, so I was doing that for a while, and then it, I guess at some point I started kind of acquiring or collecting organs. I, I think the first organ I had was a chord organ, and I got it at a, a yard sale, uh, I believe. And I don't know if you're, anybody's familiar with a chord organ. It's just uh, an electric organ that's uh, powered by a fan or air. And um, on the one side it has like major and minor chords. The other side it ha you know has one or two octaves of notes. So this is when I really started getting to, to vocals and singing. Um, I hadn't really done much singing up until then, but um, I would just, you know, kind of play the different chords and harmonize with the chords and the different notes through scales, stuff like that, and just kind of, I don't know, started really getting into singing and playing at the same time. Um, so I was doing that a lot, and then uh, at some point, I, at some store in the Northeast, I got, I got this really great Farfisa organ, and um, I started playing that a lot, and um, some friend of, Friends of mine had a band that actually had a record out, and they were playing live shows, and a band called Un. Um, and so I, they asked me if I wanted to play Farfisa with them in their band. So I was really excited about that because, you know, before that I was just playing in basements pretty much at house parties. So, you know, with this I got to, you know, go to clubs and play at different venues. I got to meet a lot of different other experimental uh, musicians at the time, and so it was you know, really exciting time for me just to kind of get out there and just be playing music at these clubs. And um, so I guess I did that for, you know, a couple years. And then uh, there was some inter in internal turmoil in the band and they ended up breaking up. And so at that point, I just kind of decided to go the solo route, I guess. Um, I had already, as I said, acquired some organs and been just, uh, you know, playing and recording, well, I just 
playing on my own. And then a friend of mine loaned me a, a four track, a Tascam four track cassette player, uh, which I, I still kind of use to this day a lot. Um, I don't know if any, any of you are familiar with that. <laughs> Anybody ever use a Tascam? <laughs> uh, so yeah, th this was back in the day. I guess cassettes are still kind of, are they, are they making a comeback? <laughs> yes. Uh, they've always been, they were always yeah. already making a comeback. <laughs> yeah, I'll reference cassettes a lot because yeah, I mean I started out using a cassette recorder and and um, but still I, I guess I'm just I'm just partial to analog. I mean I know we're in the digital age now, but I still I'm an antiquated cancer and I can't get myself out of the analog uh, <laughs> mode. So yeah, I, I still love the Tascam four-track recorder, but anyway, that's that's where I started uh, recording with, and um, so that was like a real just kind of awakening for me. I, you know, I was living in a house with, I don't know, six different people at the time, and I would just kind of, you know, go in my room and record for a couple days at a time. I was just really into it, and that's when I started to... Um, you know, get into like, like multiple vocal tracks. Uh, you know, I had four different, or well, eight, I guess, on my bounce tracks to work with. Um, and usually, most songs I had, I at least used two or more vocal tracks um, on the recordings that I made. Um, so that was a real kind of, you know, turning point for me, just to just experiment with multiple vocals. Um, so I was just recording a lot and composing songs on the four track, and then uh, when I would play live, I would just do, uh, you know, solo, uh, you know, just one voice, and either play organ or gu guitar. Um, and I did that for a while. And then a friend of mine uh, who was into pedals, into various pedals, and uh, had got a line six uh, loop pedal, and I heard that, and I was just like, "Oh yeah, I got to try doing vocals with this." So I started looping vocals, and then I, you know, that was I don't know, early two thousand, and I've been doing it ever since. So ten or ten or more years, I guess. Um, but I just like what it added. I mean, I mostly use it in a live setting. I also you know, use it in recordings as well, um, because as I'll show you, it has some really interesting features like half speed and reverse that you can do on it. Um, but, it, you know, as far as a live setting, it was like when you have, when you're recording and you have all these, you know, tracks you're working with and you're trying to dupl re, you know, duplicate it live, it's, it's a lot easier when you, uh, when you have something you can add, you know, layers to. So, yeah, I, I mean, I've been using that for a while now. Um, the, other, the other thing I'll talk about, my influences a little, I guess. Um, at the time when I was really getting into vocals and recording, I have a lot of friends, as I said, that were avid record collectors and were making really good mixed tapes. And uh, um, I was really getting into just a lot of different female vocalists. Um, a lot, of sh a lot of female, like British, you know, folk singers. Uh, Jackie McShee from Pentangle is one. Sandy Denny from Fairport Convention. Uh, you know, Bridget Fontaine, Catherine Ribeiro. Uh, just, just general like female vocalists that I felt that just like had a lot of, um, I don't know, just kind of how should I put it. <laughs> Sang, sang with a lot of emotion and feeling, and uh, and I guess I uh, I think it was I think I was reading an article with uh, they were interviewing Thurston Moore, and he was talking about his uh, some of his favorite or you know female uh, idols or composers or something, and he met it mentioned Hildegard of Bingen and 
um, you know, who, who see everybody was talking about her earlier, but she, I mean, she's definitely been an influence on me. Um, I think more from just like a holistic standpoint, like, uh, I mean, I think she's, you know, did amazing compositions and, but just, you know, I mean, this was a 12th century nun that was, you know, just really creative, you know, had these amazing, amazing visions that she was, you know, the, you know, these drawings that came out of it. And she was really into plants and healing and nature. And uh, I feel like that influences my work a lot. And so I was just very inspired by her uh, and still am, you know, uh, so. Just mentioning some of the some of the women that have inspired me, I guess, in the past. <laughs> so, um, but yeah, so I guess now I'll just go into um, first. I'm going to demonstrate the line six um, pedal here, this green one, and then the loop station. Um, I think with the line six, I'm gonna do a like a vocal loop that I do when I play live, or I have played live in the past. I haven't done it recently, but um, and then just show you. I, I didn't. I mean, this is the only instrument that I brought. This Casio keyboard. Um, you can use all sorts of instruments through it as well. I mean, I mostly use it for vocals, but um, I mean, you could use it with guitar. Or, bass or organs or whatever. Um, so I think I'm going to do that and then you can ask me any questions you have about what's going on and I might kind of interject something like this is what's happening um, and then when I'm done you can ask me questions maybe about that. Is that okay? That's awesome. And then I'll move on to the loop station and kind of show you that because they're, I mean they're real, like, two very different pedals like the line six, I've, I've been using much longer than the loop station. I just got this maybe two, three years ago. Um, but there's, you know, good things, bad things. Well, not bad things. <laughs> good things and uh, just different things that they, you know, they have. So. Awesome.
So yeah, that's an example of vocalism. <laughs> I mean, mostly on this, I'm going to demonstrate stuff that I do through microphones. As I said, you can use instruments through it as well. Um, and then in this next thing I'm going to do, I think, is going to use the loops or the line six and the loop station, uh, just so you can, I don't know, see <laughs> possibly things you could do together with them as well. Uh, does anybody have any questions before I move on? Yes. I have a question. Um, when you're um, bending down, you're raising a dial. Was it just the volume, sort of the master volume? Yeah, I mean that's that's one of the great things about this is that um, I mean you can just uh, adjust the volume, like fade the volume out, mm -hmm. so it's not this abrupt like ending or whatever. Okay, uh, cool. So, is there any way this? It, was it loud enough? Like it? Yeah. Okay, because I feel like I'm kind of hearing it. Can I ask you a question? Yeah. Is it possible once you've layered something, can you take it off, or like is it once it's layered, it's in there? Uh, yeah. Once it's layered, it's pretty much in there. Um, the the other thing, I might as well explain this real quick right now. Um, as far as the layers, like the line, the line six, the initial layer is, I think, about maybe ten seconds or so, whereas the loop station, I. I tried to look it up in the manual. I couldn't find an exact time, but I did an entire round, like an entire song, and then sung over it in round, and it, like, you know, it was fine. So I think it's, I don't know, at least, <laughs> the initial loop is what I'm saying is at least, I don't know, 30 seconds or more, a minute maybe. Um, so yeah, once you, so this, this is like the initial, so if you don't press that first button, it just automatically kind of stops the loop. So I don't know what's is that ten seconds, twelve seconds, I don't know. And then, so that, that's the first layer that you put down the loop, and then whatever you put on top of that kind of can go on like infinitely. So, um, but the only way you can erase what you did, I mean, the first layer you can just stop it and start again, I guess. But. And then at a certain point, you like put what you had done into the reverse, and then you would sing on top of that. Is that uh, yeah, so, so that's regular speed, um, I mean, this is why I like the line six, I mean, this, the loop station, you'll see, you can do reverse, but this, you can do half speed, which I, I like, so it kind of takes it down an octave, so, so if you press that, it'll take it down an octave, and it went, so initially, what I did that, and then I layered on top of that, so.
Sorry. Uh, just because you mentioned uh, in legal report that the things that you do by, by doing it half speed and inverting it, like those are techniques of polyphonic composition that I, like Cactus <coughs> was writing, or that's the connection that I made. But I, I was wondering if you thought if you ever thought about that connection, if that's how you approach it, or th does it come only from the te by the technology a lot? Uh, I'm sorry, what kind of writing did you say? Polyphonic composition. Oh, like okay, writing, yeah. Like um, yeah, I definitely, I'm, I've definitely listened to a lot of polyphonic composition. I mean, I like the interweaving of vocals. I mean, I guess, I mean, is it an oxymoron to say like a solo polyphonic vocal? <laughs> mm -hmm. yeah. But yeah, I mean, I've definitely been influenced by that. Um, and I, yeah, I don't know which came first. Like, I mean, de I mean, definitely the half speed, like to me, conjures up images of monks chanting or something, I guess, but I don't, I don't know. I mean, that's just, you know, um, I think I probably kind of discovered that. Be, I, I don't know which I was listening to that first and then discovered that. I'm pretty sure I, like, kind of discovered it and then was listening. I mean, I use it a lot, and it's probably because I like that kind of vocal styling, I guess. So, I, yeah. <laughs> Question. <laughs> okay. I have another question yeah. about the half speed. So when you used, uh, when you selected to half speed and then you were again putting recording another layer, then the half speed is that is part like its layer that will not go back. Yes. <laughs> and, whoops. Yes and no. Uh, I I'm gonna do something with. And it gets kind of complicated, but I'm gonna do, the next thing I'm gonna do is with, I use a lot of bells as well, which I guess is kind of a medieval thing, and a flute loop. <laughs> uh, and I, I was gonna demonstrate like, um, cause initially, like I, I can, I, like I take it down to half speed and then sing on top of that, but there, there's the thing, you can take it down to half speed and then change it so it's reversed. Um, so maybe I'll, I'll do that and then you can, if you have questions. Okay, cool. Okay. Is that okay? Yeah, yeah, of course. <laughs> it might be easier to illustrate. Sure.
the, the bells are still at half speed, but then the vocals got reversed. So yeah, I mean that's. I just kind of wanted to use that to demonstrate. I mean something else you can do, like as an effect too. But um, but you can't like. Uh, it's easier to explain when I have people there. But yeah, if you if you hit it once, it's half speed. If you double click it, it's reverse. And then um, if you go back one, it's like it switches <laughs> basically. <laughs> I don't know, it's kind of hard to explain. But okay, cool. Easier to show, maybe. Sure. <laughs> so does it, it's only division of two? You can only multiply it by two or divide it by two? Or is there a knob that you can also adjust the speed there? No, it's just, I mean, it's just a like the tap tempo so button. So it's just like basically half speed. Uh, so it, it drops it an octave, and then you can do reverse. And then you can kind of combine the two. But it's just a button, it's not a knob or anything. Right, so none of the buttons will allow you to adjust, uh, none of the knobs will allow you to adjust speed. No, no. Um, yeah, the, the the knobs are all, I, that's the other thing. There's, <laughs> there's like, how many, I don't know, 10, 15 different settings on this, like tube echo, tape echo, sweep echo. Delay, digital delay, um, you know, settings that you can use with instruments. I'm sorry. Do you, do you use them that <laughs> I don't use them that often, actually. I mean, I mostly just use the loop part of this, but. Because um, in our experimentation, we, I think, couldn't have an effect whilst on the, um, using the mic while simultaneously recording the loop. Yeah, you can. It's, it's like the loop. Is, is one channel, and then the 12 other mm. delay, analog, delay, whatever settings are another channel, mm -hmm. or other channels. Uh, so you can't use them yet simultaneously. Um, I might actually uh, hook the, although did, did you say there was some sort of delay on this? Because usually I don't like to play my Casio the straight, like I used to. Yeah, Okay, because either I can I can hook, hook the pedal up and I can show you some of the settings, or we can just do it right here too, and you can just think, you know experiment with the settings on your own. I mean, one of the reasons I got the loop station was um, I, I like the fact that it, ha it has pre-recorded loops that you can do with it. So there's 11 different, they call them phrase settings or whatever. Um, so you can, like say you're at home and you, you record a sample or you know, something with an instrument or you know, I do you know, of course vocal loops or whatever, um, that you like, you can save them. Um, so I'm going to show you a loop that I have saved, and then uh, you can also uh, overdub on top of that as well, um, and either save that, or you can, I'll show you, like, the, init the in initial loop I'm showing you right now is a vocal loop. I'm going to do some organ uh, overdubbing on top of it. Um, but then 
then when I'm done, I'll just save probably just the initial vocal loops that you can see how they look. switch to another setting it then it's just that was the original pre-recorded one but if, if you wanted to save it you could I'll, I'll show you how to save so then I mean you can also you can save you know pre-record stuff or you can just stuff live or whatever so this is just you know a vocal loop of what I was going to do right here
with this too, you can, like if you don't like the loop that you're doing, you can just, you know, erase it on the spot kind of, or if you like it, then you can save it in the, uh, the different settings. You know. So when you were using um, one of your pre-recorded um, tracks or whatever, when you were sort of layering on top of that, you, I mean, you weren't changing the, you know, what you had recorded. So you have to write over it in order for it to sort of, like you didn't lose what you had. No, I mean, that's, I mean, it's still in here. So I lost <coughs> what, the organ that I recorded on top of it because I chose to not save it okay. by just going to one of the other channels. Can you play multiple things that you've saved at once, or do you have to go to that channel? Yeah, like it, like say I, I liked what I played on top of that, the mm -hmm. organ. Uh, I can then save that as well. Okay. Like, I mean, you can save the initial loop, and then you can also save what you record on top of it. Save loops can you play simultaneously or play back simultaneously? Uh, pre recorded right. loops? Uh, just one at a time. I mean, there's 11 different pre recorded loops that you can do, um, but you can only play one at a time. I mean, that's, that's one of the reasons I wanted to get this because, like, I can play, and I mean, if you want, I can demonstrate that, but I'm sure you can figure it out. <laughs> I mean, I can play a pre-recorded loop on here and do a vocal loop with the line six on top of that. Uh, and so it's just like double loop power, you know? <laughs> but uh, loop but power. yeah, I mean, with this, you can, you can only just do one, either one pre-recorded loop and then overdub on top of that, or oh, just one loop at a time. I mean, it's like, like say, I, like th this is, you know, just for example, this is number six. So, you know, if I stop that, and then there's number five, you know, you just kind of switch the dial to get to the different settings. Uh, well, that that reminds me too. There, like, I've been doing stuff with um, just different sound, like crickets or frogs or whatever nature sounds, you can, uh, I mean that I recorded like on a mini disc player and you can uh, kind of uh, patch it into the, the, the loop or and, like make a uh, pre-recorded loop from pre-recorded sounds that you have. We also had been trying to figure out, I can't remember the, it was almost as good as double loop power, but some kind of quote, I think it was from Mike, <laughs> when we were trying to figure out that on, is it, did you say, is it phrase or phase? Uh, the, yeah, they call them phrase. Okay, phrase, a phrase, phrase has two tracks. Remember the two track thing, guys. A memory hits only two tracks. A memory only has two tracks, or two tracks can't withstand a memory. I can't remember all that. <laughs> but we, I mean, that seems to give you a lot more options in terms of um, put, you, you can record two separate things on the same channel, and or the same phrase. Does it, and run them what, together. What, by two separate things? You mean like two separate instruments? Or? Well, sure, uh, but t two different um, memories. <laughs> <laughs> two, two different, right? two two different separate recordings? Well, separate there are recordings like samples. on the same um, phrase, like number four might be a good one. Mm -hmm. um, we had a really good number four one. <laughs> we lost it, of course. Um, but there's two, like isn't there two tracks within <coughs> each phrase? I mean, there's two. In, I mean, there's a mic input and an instrument input. So, did you have two different things you 
working no, on. No, let, let me look at what I'm saying here. Okay. Like, oh, yours is slightly different. I, I it is, yeah. <laughs> I, I, I noticed that. <laughs> oh. She doesn't have two tracks for this. Oh. oh, is that what it is? We have one <laughs> other feature. Uh -huh. Wow, maybe we will show you. Later. Yeah, I, I was going to say something. I noticed yours had some settings that mine didn't have. Yeah. So. Okay, cool. Well, we might have to experiment. Yeah, we have one other thing. But it's like so you can do two. I mean, this, I mean, it has a mic input and it has yeah. an instrument input. So yeah, I think we so also have that. You maybe. can do. I mean, I can do simultaneously do like a organ or a guitar, or whatever loop, and then do a vocal loop on mm. top of that. Okay, cool. Yeah, um, and it'll save both of them. Okay, so it does basically do the same thing. This is just makes um, within one phrase you can have two separate tracks that you can. So it almost doubles the amount of phrases that you have. And then you can put them together. But anyway, we'll, we'll okay. do that in a you second. Won't, but anyway, explore that. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, I've always been a big fan of just pedals in general. Uh, and I mean, before I used the Line 6, I, I actually, I almost brought it tonight. I have like a phaser pedal delay, distortion, that kind of thing. I mean, I, um, I think that, like, I never, uh, I mean, the, as I said, when I discovered the Line 6, it was kind of like a friend had it and I heard it and just kind of imagined the possibilities, I guess. Um, so I think that had a big effect on how my work, the direction it kind of took, I guess. I mean, I, I, I do use it on, on recordings a bit, but I mean, it's mostly I feel like more like a lot, like a tool for live performances for me, just to kind of enhance or kind of make vocals a little bit fuller sounding. Um, so um, yeah, I think I think the Line Six probably definitely was like an influence in the direction that my music took. I guess. <laughs> that your question. Yeah, and that actually um, leads to another question that I have, which is the difference between what you use when you're recording by yourself at home, for instance, and what you use uh, when you're performing live. So in that, so the loop pedal isn't really a factor when you record at home, or um, I mean, I did, I have used it, like, I guess, definitely on the last album we recorded, and. Mm -hmm. Probably the one, not previous, but pre. I mean, I, I do like so. Just an example: the last three albums I recorded, like one called Alone in the Darkwood. Like I definitely that was I think the first album I started like using the Line Six, and not not like like from start to finish. Like when I had like a finished loop, I would like use it as a track maybe. Or definitely for the the like the half speed or the reverse settings or something like that. Like that would be one of the tracks on you know four or eight tracks I was using. Um, I mean the the record after that I I recorded in a studio and that was actually like the only record I've ever recorded in a studio. And I think I only I mean I used stuff like what I just did with the bells and the. The flute uh, that was one of the tracks I used on a song, um, just because that's like an instant way to get like bells and flute, like you know, you know, like half or like half speed or whatever. Um, and then the last record I've done, I, I definitely did a lot with, 
and that's why I got uh, the loop station, I think, because like I would have maybe two tracks of stuff that I had, you know, done with the one six, and um, so like yeah, one track might be you know reverse vocals with bells, or like, one track might be flutes with I don't know, you know, pre-recorded sound that I had. So, yeah, I think I think in the beginning it was more like a live tool, and then I mean definitely a couple of the last records I've done I've used it in recordings as well. Um, so yeah, it's, it's served both purposes. I guess. Um, I have a, a messy question. But to do with, um, you know, you, you, you cite Hildegard, and that's, you know, it's, it's very obvious when you're listening to some of these, you know, wide range phrases. And, you know, and she's this monophonic composer mainly, but who's like working in a time when everyone's moving over to polyphony more or less. And so you're like using some of her musical characteristics, and then you use the technology to like put them in a polyphonic setting, which is kind of cool. And I'm just wondering, like, you said you're partial to analog, and um, yet you have all these sort of like hallmarks of like medieval music or early polyphonic music. I'm just wondering, like, how does the technology, you know, like, what do, what is it offering you that you want? I mean, it's obvious we can hear it, but you know, like, how is this <laughs> getting you to the project that you have? Well, I think I think what it boils down to is. I, I mean, some people creatively work better in groups. Some people work better creatively independently. So a loop pedal is really advantageous for somebody who works better creatively independently, which I do. Because I mean, I, I could be doing this with, you know, if I, if I had, you know, five, 10 other people, could, I mean, I, I guess, I mean, yeah, like, you can't do stuff like half speed or reverse or anything like that. Um, but the layering of vocals and, you know, polyphony, stuff like that, I mean, something that is done with larger groups of people. And um, so since I'm doing it more in an independent solo setting, I guess, like pedals are one way to do that. I mean, I, I guess, I mean, I, you know, that, I mean, that is all definitely a big influence. And like, I always, you know, I mean, a lot of my influence too has just been like experimental psychedelic music. So <laughs> that's, I guess, where the pedals come in as well, you know. It's like, yeah, if Hildegard had access to <laughs> pedals, would she have used them? <laughs> you know, I don't know. Oh, sure. I don't know. So, yeah. <laughs> Without a doubt, yeah. Uh, so I, I always think that's kind of like this weird, like, yeah, I like organic kind of analog sound. At the same time, I'm using this modern technology. Um, so I guess it's my love of pedals and modern technology is more like maybe for the, the, it allows me to just, you know, record myself. I mean, it's not like, you know, um, yeah, I mean, I know, I know other female vocalists and I, I have done some, you know, work with them, mostly with instruments versus voice, but uh, it just, yeah, allows me to kind of do my own thing, mm -hmm. and, um, and do you find, like, you know, you said you're, you're partial, I mean, you have these tools in your, you know, in your possession, so that, you know, obviously influences what you're using, but, you know, what, is there, is there something that, the hands on the tech offers you or does anything special that like, I mean, cause you could be doing this digitally. You could be recording your voice, making loops, you know, you could be doing it on like GarageBand. 
So, yeah, you know, true. I mean, it doesn't have the same effect, but I'm just wondering, like, um, you know, why do you remain partial to analog texts? Um, <laughs> uh, that's a good question. I just like the, I don't know, the warmness of the sound, I guess, to me. It has a warmer sound than digital, and, and don't I mean don't get me wrong. Like when I have recorded stuff in analog, and then going like going into a studio, like a friend's studio, and mixing it, it's all been digital. But somehow, I to my ears, and it's hard to explain. I can tell the difference if it's originally like. Um, recorded in analog, I feel like it has a warmer sound than if it originally was recorded in digital. Well, maybe that's just my imagination. Um, but yeah, maybe it's, I, I mean, I, I also have friends too that, that play live and they, and, and I mean, that's one thing about the pre-recorded loops that I guess I feel a little apprehensive about loop using because like when I see bands live, like I like, I like to see what they're doing. I don't like to like, hear a recording or like samples of stuff as much. So it's like about the process, like I'm creating this thing live, like right in front of people versus, I mean with the pre-recorded loops, I'm not. So that's, you know, going against my principles a bit, I guess. <laughs> but, um, but yeah, it's the, the process of creating this totally live performance in front of people versus like creating half of it in your studio and then um, half of it in the live setting. Um, but yeah, as far as like you said, garage. garage I mean, band, I, don't like, even, I would not use garage. Band I, I don't either. That, I've, I've, I've never used it. Yeah, <laughs> so I, just, I mean, maybe I would use it really well. Like no, no. <laughs> I mean, we, this is, a, I mean, I'm just, I'm, I'm projecting onto you my own, um, like I, I've, catch myself, you know, fetishizing, like, the, the sort of the hardware, and I'm just, like, wondering, like, when artists choose to use these tools over others, like, mm -hmm. I'm just interested in knowing those motivations. Yeah. Um, yeah, I, I mean, maybe it's partially just, you know, I found something I like, and or have it break, I guess. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, the live composition thing is interesting to me that you are, you know, you're live composing more or less, like as you're performing. Uh, yeah, I mean, I mean, I guess, I guess my dilemma all along is, as I said, it's like being a solo artist, like, um, you know, when you're recording, you have, you know, four, six, however many tracks that you're recording with, so translating that into a live setting, um, you know, can be kind of tricky, so I guess I'm trying to translate it, like, the best I can or something. Yeah. Um, but, um, but, yeah, I mean, it, you know, live or recorded, like, they, I mean, they're really great to use. things and um, I, I just I guess I guess for me I've always chosen looping as well because it's like you know kind of to me music is a way to kind of like <coughs> relax meditation that kind of thing so to me like the looping process is like kind of a meditative kind of thing you know because Yes. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Anybody else? Any questions? So not a question, but I I know that some people are already aware of this, but I think it's an important point considering the context of the discussion. The pedals are digital. And so, <laughs> right? 
that doesn't really matter We're that much. On the Sorry. <laughs> <laughs> what you could do it in an analog setting would be to have um, open reel tape machines with loops. So you'd need probably like 12 of them. You're right. And they're like yeah. this big. And I think the point is that you're able to do it without those things, right? Without saying, well, hold on, you know, I've got to adjust the, the loop, tape it, you know, and record each one. Yeah. Um, that, thank you for bringing that out, because right. I never really <laughs> thought about the fact that the pedals aren't really analog pedals, but yeah, I mean, but yeah, yeah. Do what I understand what do. you're saying. It doesn't really matter. Right? Yeah. Anymore. Well, and then aside from that, like, to re-emphasize my analog thing, but the the one the, the one time I did record in the studio, I mean you know Greg Weeks, and it was in an analog studio, and that was the only reason I did it, and it made me think of that because you know you had he had these big real to real things, and it was great because I could still record in reverse. <laughs> it's like you know. Uh, so, but yeah, I, um, yeah, I mean, it's, it's a fine line between the analog and the digital. It's like, I, I think, like, I mean, initially, like, there's nuances, but I'm not strictly analog. I just, I just think if I can use the process as much as I can, I'd like to, uh, especially when recording, but, but yeah. I'm hearing the difference as computer and not computer. That's, that seems to be more of the issue. Mm -hmm. Do I want to sit in front of a computer to make music? To yeah. make live performance. Right, exactly. Yeah. Instead, you have this human interface that's more. Yeah, I guess maybe that's somewhere in my brain. That's, even though it is, they are digital um, pedals, like to me, it's more of. Process is the right word, but it's, I don't know. Yeah, I mean, I, I'm not, you know, I'm not pro or anti one or the other. I just, I have my preferences definitely. And like, I mean, if I was strictly analog, obviously I, would, I wouldn't be doing half the stuff I'm doing. But I, I think it, what it all boils down to is it's like, and product sound of what you're getting, I guess, or just like, um, how it sounds, but yeah. <laughs> I mean, there's there's perfectly good sounds you can get from digital equipment, and I, I mean, I use it. That's always interesting. No, there's no such thing as digital sound. You're transferring something analog into digital and yeah. then back into yeah. analog for the wave. So, so yeah. Yeah, that's what I'm saying. Like when I record, I start as analog, but it goes when you mix it, it goes into a digital. And it comes, has to come out with <laughs> it has to come out with analog. So. Can I ask you about what you said about an organic process? where people are doing things with computers and like I, I guess that is like I can't like to me it's yeah I guess it's more about you know the, the live or to me I equate I guess computers yeah with, with more recording or um, you know people doing stuff pre live set kind of thing um, so I guess yeah it's something about the, the process of, uh, like, if you go to see a band, you see somebody playing a guitar, you know they're playing a guitar. If you see somebody, you know, 
singing and um, you see them like kind of building up this, um, you know, this vocal uh, thing. It's it's different than it. And once again, I, I mean, I do use both. As I said, like you know, I can just press this button and have a vocal loop come up. Um, but that's not all I'm doing. You know, I'm also creating the loops live. Um, so I, I mean, I think, I mean, I guess I could create a vocal loop in here and then save that and then go over to the line six and create a vocal loop. But I mean, there's only, only like so many things you can do in a live setting, you know, without this like, like having your audience be bored, I guess. So um, I'm kind of working with both things, I guess. And as I said, I mean, I've just, I've just started working with this in the last couple of years just because, uh, especially on the last record I did, like, I, ha I mean, I have a lot of, you know, like a track where I have some sort of um, loop going, or, you know, two, two loops going, so, like, that way it just, it's just easier for me to recreate what I do, it in, like, what I've done in the record setting uh, to a live setting. And it just, I think it just adds to the performance as well. So, I mean, as I said, when I started out, I mean, I was just, and, and I, I mean, you know, I love watching people just sing and play guitar, At the same time, it's, uh, I think as I went on, like I just wanted to kind of add more levels, I guess, to what I was doing or something. The difference um, between using a loop you recorded, say, at home versus one you recorded in front of the audience, <coughs> that, I've always thought, well, hey, you're being brought into the creative process. The audience is being brought into the creative process. Mm -hmm. And so I almost think that makes you feel more invested in what you're creating. Mm -hmm. And like I was there for that. <laughs> and that, and that, you know, I was really and, and by the way, that it just made me think like that the first vocal thing that I did, I, I don't think there's a recorded recorded version of that. Like that's kind of something I just do live and I, I've never really recorded because I think there's stuff like that that almost work better in a live setting. Like if I, if I did that like on a recording, like it just, I don't in my mind, it doesn't work as well as like in a live setting, I think. But, uh, so yeah, I mean, I think um, being able to do something like that kind of changes live process versus a recorded process. Yeah. I was wondering how like the process of looping affects kind of the range of composition that you can do. Like you were talking about using two loops at once. Do you kind of just create textures where they stay out of phase or do you try to create rhythms or sync them up? I mean, like, I, for example, like I have something I've been doing lately is like I have a this one. So I have like a reverse. Uh, a reverse bell loop in here. And then I'll play do a, like what I did with the, um, like on the line six, I'll loop bells and flute and play that simultaneously. So I have the reverse and the non-reverse. Mm. Uh, one I can do it. <laughs> <laughs> I was just curious about, you know, because with, with the loop, it says kind of, it kind of forces you into this like building structure where you start with just one line and it ends up with like a very dense texture and I was wondering uh, how do you explore that? Um, how do I explore it? Like, like 
does every composition end up that way, or do you play with pacing or the length of a loop or different uh, instruments at different times? Do you pull it back somehow sometimes? Um. Yeah, I think it. Echo is busy. <laughs> Uh, I mean, yeah, I mean, there is that kind of thing where, like, you mean everything kind of sounds the same because it's the same kind of pattern over Well, again. obviously it doesn't all sound the same, but, yeah. yeah, like, what are the parameters that you work with? Uh, well, uh, parameters. <laughs> it's like, I mean, it's like, it's, it builds up, it's like this teleological, like, you know, building, like you add all these layers in the finished product as like this super dense layered um, mm -hmm. texture piece. And er, like, I'm kind of curious too, like do you ever, you know, build up, you know, a dense te texture and then cut it off or, because, you know, we've, we've talked about how you can't really like scale back suddenly, like strip off loops. So mm -hmm. what are ways that maybe that you experiment with different textures and different sort of like drives? You um, mean like in a live set? I mean, because yeah, like in before a, I play live, I, I mean, I, I actually like I'll practice or like, you know, play different things and some things work, some things don't. Um, but in like one sort of unit of performance or one piece or like whatever, do you ever scale back? Like, you know, you build up um, a layered piece and then, you know, do you ever sort of cut it off and bring something else in or, uh, or, or do most yeah, of Yeah, I mean, well, that, I mean, that's the other thing I like about having both I mean, once, once you, on the line six, once you build something up, can't scale it back basically right. it's there uh, but um, I mean I, I, I tend to especially recently like I, I don't I don't like to end like songs and begin new songs I like to kind of blend and I was I should maybe I should have showed you that tonight I was gonna do one thing into the other like where like I'll have something going on the loop station and then I'll fade in the line six or I'll have something going on the line six and then I'll fade in the loop station. Because I, when I'm playing live, I personally just would rather just have everything kind of go blend together than just like stop and start something else. Oh, yeah. and, and that, with these two loop pedals, I mean that, that really enables me to do that because I can fade like as you can see, like, and they both have fading effects, so you can fade one thing out and fade another thing in, or you know, vice versa. Um, so, but I, another thing about like recording music, um, like I've always, you know, especially recording on a um, like a four track, like the way I've always kind of gone about composing music is like. I record, like with a four track, I'll record a track or two and then kind of listen back to it and kind of envision what needs to happen on top of that. So I think the way I've always um, gone about composing music is like, uh, like I, I always too consider like, like more, I mean, I don't have a whole lot of musical training and um, like I look at it, music as more like an artistic approach I guess where like I'm adding these layers and I mean if, if you're recording you can kind of take the layers away if they don't work uh, but you know you can just just like adding layers to you get a finished product that sounds good to you uh, so it's like an intuitive process, kind of. Uh, whereas I, I don't, I don't have like I'm not the type that like I write, like I get a song in my head and I'm like, oh yeah, like it's more like it's more like a building process, I guess. So maybe that's why I'm, I've always been attracted to something like a loop pedal where you can, you know, layer stuff, I guess. But um, so. 
know, I mean, everybody, you know, composes or works differently, but um, I guess, um, yeah, it's usually the way my brain works the best. But uh, did I answer your question? <laughs> why I do I like like I, I, I rarely just abruptly just stop a loop I always either fade it in or fade it out pretty much I noticed though that when you were playing the keyboard you would you would start recording or stop recording and the keyboard would just kind of punch in that was kind of cool uh, wait say that again what? I, maybe I uh, was mistaken but it looked like you were kind of so sort of holding a chord, mm -hmm. and then you'd, you'd punch in the recording, uh, and then punch it out again, so that, that in the loop, the, the chord would start and stop, but uh, it was just because of when you started recording. Yeah. Yeah, I don't, I mean, it could be, like, the, the loop station, it kind of has, I mean, you'll see when you try it out, but it, it kind of has this point where it, where the loop starts and stops, and then when you add a layer, you can kind of hear that kind of. Uh, yeah, I like that. There were some really interesting tones just from holding the same chord. But well, yeah, that's the other thing. It, I mean, if you if you have the same chord and you loop it, and then you're playing on top of that, you get these. Um, what's the word? <laughs> Yeah, definitely. There was yeah. there was a change in, in yeah. like maybe kind of some kind of phase effect. Uh -huh. Karen, do you have a, a a setting in which you feel your performance would be ideal? I mean, I ask partially because I'm recalling all the times I've seen you perform. Like you know, there's there's wide varied, you know, all sorts of situations. In a church. Settings, you mean like venues? Venues, yeah. Or even the circumstances of the performance, the festival. Um, part of the service. I don't, I don't know. Yeah, I mean, I've played in all sorts, from anything from bars. To, I have played in churches. Uh, outdoors. Uh, I don't know. I mean, I think as long as there's a good sound system, I, <laughs> it's like, and there's good acoustics. Places with high ceilings are tend to be the best, but um, so that that's probably more important than the actual setting. Although I mean, I I mean I I do feel well, and then there's the whole thing, <laughs> like you know, when I'm playing at home and in, in my my music room is where I feel the most comfortable. I think, and then you know, like you. And everything's sounding good, and you go to play live, and it's like totally different, you know. Uh, so yeah, as long as there's a good sound system, and it's I, I don't know. Um, um, yeah, because I mean, I mean, bars and clubs are always weird because you know you have people that aren't really like half listening to the music, but. If there's a good sound system, you can kind of overcome that. And like, I mean, I've had good shows, you know, in bars. So I've had good shows. Yeah, I don't. It's. I think it's more about the sound, maybe. Um, 
Is that what you were kind of? I'm wondering. I'm, I'm hearing church. Yeah, no, I mean, I have, and I have joked about doing, like, like the church tour or whatever. I, I, I'm trying, I, I think I only, oh, yeah, I, I have played in, like, yeah, like, I, I mean, churches are kind of weird, though, because, like, one church I played in, like, I mean, if the, if the acoustics are, like, I mean, if the ceilings are really high, the acoustics can kind of be weird, but there's this one chapel I played in one time that was, like, really small, so I think that would be my ideal setting, like, Kind of like the side chapel in Paris Church. Yeah, there and there was a chapel in England one time I played at. But yeah, like like something like that is is usually a really pretty nice setting. I mean, once again, as long as if you're playing through some crappy like PA or <laughs> or something, yeah, it's yeah. But yeah, it's something like that. It's usually pretty nice. But yeah, like just playing it in my in my room. <laughs> <laughs> Can I ask about um so the meaning of perspective as, as a word? And I'm curious, is there a kind of performance persona? Because I'm thinking about the photo that you submitted um, to us and you're outside in a garland, right? And um, it's a very ethereal image. So um, I'm curious to what extent um, there is a live persona. How do you craft it? How do you see your influences uh, moving into it? And then is it connected with the technology that you use, or do you see it as perhaps separate? Um, yeah, I mean, when I play live, I don't, uh, I mean, I've occasionally, like, Dressed up like the photo you're referring to. That's a great photo. <laughs> yeah, I, I mean, I was a photography minor in college, so I, I, and my, one of my big influences was Cindy Sherman. Does anyone know who that is? Yeah. Who would dress up and take photographs of herself, which I, <laughs> you guys are gonna think I'm strange. I, yeah, I just like. Solo thing. I, I I work better with myself, I guess, and ideas that I have on my own. I don't know. So I like I've always had this thing about dressing up and taking photos, like you know, just getting a tripod and dressing up and I mean all you know, that photo is just a tripod and um, So you're doing it yourself? Yeah. Oh, yeah. Wow. But I mean I, I I like dressing up. I <laughs> I like velvet a lot <laughs> and uh, uh, I like I mean I live I, I lived in Philadelphia for 15 years, but now I live uh, in two hours from here in a kind of rural setting. And as I said, like I think nature and the woods and trees and uh, I mean, I guess it's one thing I'll, with my music, like I, I'm influenced by that. So like I hope when I'm, people listen to it, like some sort of that sort of image gets conjured up, I guess a bit. Um, so, but, I mean, playing live, I just, yeah, I mean, uh, I mean, I probably should dress up, <laughs> and I have occasionally, uh, but, um, but yeah, I mean, I think it's just important to just kind of, you know, do your thing, and just hope that it's affects people, I guess, in some sort of way, or has some sort of emotion. I mean, I guess that's, for me, it's like music is uh, a lot about emotion or an emotional outlet, or so, like, I want it to have some sort of uh, effect me or on people. So, you hope that's what happens? I don't know. I mean, it's about her bringing um, the different guises that her voice takes through all of this technology. Mm -hmm. And um, perhaps I'm reading too much into um, uh, tonight, but it seems like with your um, looking back to a lot of these folk singers and this 
interest in the emotive quality of a single female performer, and then using the looper um, to amplify that emotive quality. It doesn't seem as though you necessarily disguise your voice that much as much as uh, you kind of engage with your own voice multiplied in these polyphonic compositions. Mm -hmm. So I, I think it's really well, I actually, the persona actually, is there too. Well, a good story too that I could tell. <laughs> Uh, I, I think I think when I first started out, like as I said, like I I mean I didn't have much. I mean I just you know started doing vocals like playing along with the core organ and I, I think when I first the first record that I put out, I think my vocals were kind of low in the mix, um, and then I the second. The second record I put out was, uh, I don't any of you know that Acid, Mother, Acid Mother's Temple is a band from Japan, but uh, the guy, Kawabata Makoto, released it, and I sent him my recording of the album, and he sent it back to me, and what he sent back to me was completely different, like, he put the vocals, like, way higher in the mix than I would have, and he put... I think he put delay or reverb on them, and they were just like so prominent. I remember the first time I heard it, I was like, ah! I was like in horror. I was like, I can't. And then I don't know, it, like I, I can't remember how it happened. I remember having like discussions with him about it, and he's like, no, I, you know, this is the way it needs to be, or something. And and then I think that was kind of the turning point, maybe, of like, like. Um, just like, yeah, just like, well, this is what I'm doing and I need to, like, it needs to be more prominent and stronger and forceful because it's just like, you're doing vocals and no one are in the mix and nobody's really gonna, like, yeah, if, that, if that's what I wanted to concentrate on, that's what it kind of had, like, that's kind of the way it had to be, I guess. So, um, but yeah, I mean, it's, it's you know, it's, it's hard to, like, Kind of come to that realization, or like, you know, <laughs> so. Uh, but yeah, I mean, as I the, the, you know, a lot of the female vocal influence that I mentioned, like, I think, like, what I feel like it's just like, you know, things that just come from like somewhere deep inside you, like, you know, just um, whether it be express that through playing an instrument or through singing or whatever, I think that's important just to have that kind of emotional intensity or just, you know, whatever. It's deep inside you, let it out. <laughs> <laughs>
first time. So, so when so you're, you're recording right. something, so if you want to stop um, here, it's one press to press record, okay. and then this and then is when you that controls the both of the recording. Yeah. Yeah. No, this is connected to this, and three times, and that's then that's it. We currently have them separate. It kind of okay. Okay. Um, yeah. Um, yeah. 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 So, yeah. So, when you want to record something, you hit this once, and if you want to just stop it there, you hit this once. Okay. But you can also hit this once, record, and then hit it again to start recording over. Uh, okay, let's just start with that. And then you can hit it again to just continue playing. Right.
to say, do you know, does this is this have a little bar set? Oh, it's, I don't know if it has a reverse. Just like reverse it or like go down to half speed, it'll sound great. <laughs> 